knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. In the previous tutorial, we reviewed the Diels-Alder reaction in considerable detail. Now let's examine some modifications that can be made to this important reaction. As we recall, any Diels-Alder reaction involves a diene and a dienophile going to generate cyclohexene. Up until now, the six atoms participating in the cycloaddition have been carbon atoms, but interestingly, they do not need to be. We can utilize dienophiles in which one of the two atoms is not carbon, but is rather oxygen or nitrogen, and in doing so, we can produce a variety of heterocycles. Let's see some examples of 1,3-butadiene reacting with various dienophiles and the heterocycles they produce. If using aldehydes or ketones, we can produce dihydropyrans. If using imines, we can produce tetrahydropyridines. If using thiones, the sulfurous analogs of ketones, we can produce dihydrothiapyrans. So as we can see, the utility of Diels-Alder chemistry goes far beyond the generation of cyclohexenes alone. Now we should also understand that the same trends regarding kinetics that we learned for this standard reaction will apply here. Electron withdrawing groups on the dienophile will accelerate the reaction. Take this n imine for example, recalling that tosyl functionality will withdraw electron density. This will react with cyclopentadiene even at room temperature. If using a diene substituted with electron donating functionality, such as methoxy, then the methoxy and tosyl groups can end up either ortho or para to one another, but not meta. We can replace carbon atoms with heteroatoms, not just on the dienophile, but on the diene as well. For example, let's take our standard butadiene and replace the terminal carbon with a nitrogen. That gives us this alpha-beta unsaturated imine. This can react with something like maleic anhydride to produce this tetrahydropyridine derivative. Now with heterodiels-alder reactions understood, it's time to look at an extension of this reaction, which is called a 1,3-dipolar cycloaddition. This is where the diene is replaced by a 1,3-dipole. What does this mean exactly? This term refers to a three-atom fragment, which can only be written as a zwitter ion. So we will first represent this in a general manner with A, B, and C, one pi bond, and formal positive and negative charges on B and C, respectively. This can react with a standard dienophile, such as ethene shown here, undergoing a cycloaddition under thermal conditions to produce a five-membered ring. The reason this is considered an extension of Diels-Alder is that this is also a 4 plus 2 cycloaddition. Though we don't have a diene with two pi bonds, we have a 1,3 dipole with one pi bond and one lone pair. The lone pair also qualifies as two pi electrons, so there's our 4, and the dienophile is the 2 as usual. When we push the negative charge over to the other fragment, we are generating a new sigma bond. The pi bond and the dienophile goes to generate the other new sigma bond, and the existing pi bond will go to neutralize this central atom here. These reactions are stereospecific and subject to clear regiochemical laws, so let's see some specific examples. We recently learned a bit about diazomethane, and this will work well as a 1,3 dipole. Let's react this with methyl acrylate, and we will produce this substituted pyrazoline which refers to the fact that these two nitrogen atoms have a double bond between them. For reasons regarding frontier orbitals that we won't elaborate on for the moment, the ester must end up adjacent to the terminal nitrogen. It can't be on the carbon opposite the nitrogen atoms, so there's the regiochemistry we mentioned. Looking at one more example, let's use a nitrile oxide. This is a nitrile where the nitrogen atom is positively charged and bound to an oxyanion. These are regularly produced via dehydration of nitroalkanes, typically in situ, meaning that we will produce them and then immediately react them with olefins, which is just another word for alkenes. This strategy allows for the avoidance of dipole decomposition, as it is very reactive. 
The nitrile oxide reacts with the olefin by precisely the mechanism we just outlined to produce an isooxazoline. Notice that these are cis to one another on the product, given that they were cis on the reagent. This can be cleaved at the weak NO bond by rainy nickel and then protonated in aqueous acidic workup to generate this aldol type product. The key thing we must realize is that this was done with strong regio and stereo selectivity. This would be very difficult to achieve using standard enolate chemistry, thereby making it difficult to ensure the status of these stereocenters. But with 1,3 dipolar cycloaddition, it's no problem, and therein lies the real utility of this technique in the chemistry lab. This just scratches the surface of this synthetic technique, and we could continue to use any number of different dipoles with different heteroatoms, which is why this approach is so common in natural product and drug synthesis. But for now, with this reaction understood, let's move on to some other interesting paracyclic reactions. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.